The following presentation is brought to you by Discovery Channel School, a leading provider of quality educational resources that help teachers bring the world to their students. Consider this before viewing an inside look heart attack. What do you know about heart attacks, their causes, and their effects on the body? What types of medical intervention has science discovered to help people survive and recover from them? As you watch the program, note information that supports or contradicts your understanding of heart attacks. Assignment Discovery now presents an Inside Look Heart Attack. We'll replace the whole lot, just get them off as quick as you can. It's falling off, John. The wood they use is completely useless. Well, that's why they brought us in. Do the job properly this time. John Palmer's having a bad day. It's going to get much worse. That wall's in the wrong place. We'll have to take it down and start again. Be right down. Okay. You take care up there, Marcos. For 45 years, John's heart hasn't missed a single beat. But today, it's going to let him down with dire consequences for his entire body. A ball of muscle no bigger than his fist, John's heart pumps enough blood to fill 40 barrels each day. Inside its chambers, red blood cells saturated with oxygen are sucked in and pumped out with amazing force. They are propelled into a network of blood vessels 75,000 miles long which supplies oxygen to every organ and muscle in John's body. John's heart doesn't just supply oxygen to other organs, it also supplies itself. Clinging to its surface are narrow blood vessels, coronary arteries, which feed the heart's own muscular walls. The walls of John's heart consist of 50 million elastic muscle cells, all contracting together. This is the beat of John's heart. John, when you got a moment? Yes! Unluckily for John, Lurking inside one of his vital coronary arteries is a tiny time bomb. A growth no bigger than a grain of sand. It has the potential to alter the course of John's life. There you go. Ah, oh, just a job. Came free with our order. <laughs> Looks a bit like Kenny, don't you think? <laughs> The growth inside John's coronary yeah. artery consists mainly of cholesterol. Yeah, I'm listening. Our bodies need cholesterol to function normally. Yeah. But most of what we require is manufactured in our livers. Why? Yeah. John doesn't need the extra cholesterol in his food. The surplus seeps into his bloodstream. Small amounts can be transported safely, but too much and it spills out, polluting his blood with globules of free-floating fat. Where are you going then? 
Cholesterol globules sink into tiny cracks in John's artery wall, creating a fat-filled growth, a plaque. Over the years, it bulges up and out into the artery. Slowly but surely, it begins to reduce the free flow of John's blood. Why? All of us have some plaques in our arteries, but John has many more than most men his age. Is it on the lorry? Is it on the lorry? The inner walls of his coronary arteries are riddled with plaques. Blood is being squeezed through vessels which are half the width they ought to be. 45 years of cholesterol buildup lurks beneath a thin and fragile membrane. It can't be delivered till when? Go on. John is suffering from advanced heart disease, but he doesn't know it yet because so far, his heart has been able to compensate for the damage. Well, I'll just have to manage, won't I? Yeah, 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 I'll see you later. Bye. Only a week ago, a patch of his heart muscle became starved of oxygen. The gray muscle cells sent a distress signal to nearby coronary arteries. New blood vessels began to grow a natural heart bypass, bringing a fresh supply of oxygen to the starving cells. But this kind of bypass takes at least two days to grow. Too slow to save John if an artery were to block suddenly. If anything else goes wrong today, Pete, give us a cigarette, will you? <laughs> give us a light one. John's heart is designed to respond to the needs of his body moment by moment. While he's sitting still, it needs to beat no more than 70 times a minute. To maintain its precision, it uses electricity. The heart is the only organ with its own power supply. A natural pacemaker very deep in its walls generates electrical pulses which ensure its regular beat. Each pulse surges through the cells which make up the heart's muscular walls forcing them to beat in unison and keep perfect time. Let's be having you then. What kind of lunch break's that? What are you getting, mate? We've got another job to get to after this, you know? Another 10 minutes. Hey, get the ball against that wall. The whole lot will probably fall down by itself. <laughs> hey, 10 minutes, eh? Hey. Come on, come on. There you go. As John chases after the ball, 70 heartbeats per minute is no longer enough to meet his body's demand for oxygen. It's a long time since he did any exercise, and his leg muscles cry out for extra fuel. His brain sends an urgent signal to his heart. The pacemaker reacts instantly stepping up the rate at which it fires electrical pulses. Two minutes into the game, John's heartbeat has almost doubled to 120 beats per minute. Even though he's the slowest player on the field, his heart is beating faster than anyone else's. John's oxygen intake also adapts to his needs. He breathes faster and more deeply to supply his hungry muscles. He's taking in nearly 20 times more air than normal. Yes. Come back. Come on, come to now. 
His heart keeps up its frenetic beat to pump this extra fuel to his legs. Simply to keep him in the game, John's heart and lungs are working at their limit. But by doing so, they're placing him in mortal danger. Blood is being forced faster and faster through his diseased coronary arteries. Flowing at five times their normal speed, blood cells eddy and swirl around his plaques. Bombarded by red blood cells, one fragile plaque is under unbearable strain. Its thin membrane is ripped open. Within moments, blood cells start to clot around the rupture. Anywhere else in John's body, this clotting response might save his life. But here, in his narrow artery, the effect is quite the opposite. The clot in John's artery traps more and more passing blood cells. It grows bigger, and the flow of blood to John's heart slows down. Downstream, the heart muscle cells are in peril. Their oxygen supply is dwindling, just when they need it most. His starving cells send pain signals to his brain. But John has never experienced pain from his heart before. To him, it feels just like indigestion. He has no idea that this is the start of a heart attack. The growing clot is now blocking two-thirds of his artery. John's indigestion is getting worse. He feels a vice-like pain in his left arm. His brain is confused, overloaded with the escalating pain signals coming from his heart. For the first time in his life, the regular beat of John's heart is under threat. A patch of four million muscle cells is running low on oxygen. John, what's up? What's the matter? Five minutes after his heart attack began, John's body is struggling to deal with the crisis. His brain has triggered a surge of the hormone adrenaline into his bloodstream. This is one of the most primitive and powerful reactions in the human body. Adrenaline arrives in his heart and soaks into its inner walls. The pacemaker begins to accelerate. John's heart is racing at 140 beats per minute, even faster than when he was running around. But now all its efforts are focused on its own starving muscle. Call an ambulance. But adrenaline can do nothing about the growing clot, which fills 90% of his artery. The supply of oxygen to his heart cells is down to a trickle. They are forced to shut down the function which absorbs most of their energy. They stop beating. Leaving the rest of his heart to take up the slack. 
John's weakened heart cannot sustain its beat much longer. We're just playing a game of football. How's the pain now, John? Okay. He loves football, John. It's now 15 minutes since his heart attack began. And the flow of blood through John's artery is almost totally blocked. The heart muscle cells no longer have the energy to hold themselves in one piece. Their thin membranes are starting to leak. You're gonna be okay, John. Just hang on in there. John's injured heart is wearing itself out. Its beat is getting weaker. The effects are beginning to tell on the rest of his body. John is struggling to breathe because his lungs are filling with fluid. As his heart weakens, blood backs up in the vessels coming from his lungs. The extra pressure forces liquid out of his blood into the air sacs of his lungs. The process doesn't stop. He could drown in his own body fluid. Uh, 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 uh. You must keep this on. Nice steady breaths now. Well done, mate. Bringing in a 45 year old male, possible MI, ETA three minutes, over. Just hold on, John. We're nearly there. They'll sort you out. The lack of oxygen in John's body is beginning to affect his brain. He's dizzy and disoriented. Time is running out for John. His starved heart muscle cells are beginning to burst and die. Let's get into recess for the two hands. If he's not treated within the next 20 minutes, his heart will be so badly damaged it will never beat normally again. What's the story? John Palmer, 45 year old, collapsed with chest pains playing football, no plasticity, a bit hypertensive, BP 90 over 50, tachycardia 120. When did your pain start, John? I don't know. They said about half an hour ago. Don't worry, John. We'll soon have you sorted out. Are you his friend? Yeah. Do you know if he's got a heart problem? Can you give his details to reception? Right, let's do a trial lead quick as you can, please. OK, one, two, three. John is losing 500 heart cells each second. And unlike most cells in his body, they can never be replaced. He's had a big anterior MI, we have to thrombolize him. No contraindications, so let's give him some TPA. By measuring the pattern of electricity in John's heart, the ECG locates the dying patch of muscle. Now his only hope is that his blocked artery can be cleared by a clot-busting drug, tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA. The TPA must reach the clot before so many heart cells die that his heart stops and he dies too. John's heart muscle has been reconnected just in time. Susie, hi, customer for you. Only Your half a million John cells Paul. have been lost. Anterior. The survivors are starting to beat once more. Okay. His condition yeah. has stabilized. Can you have a bed ready about 10 minutes?
But as oxygen floods back, one surviving cell starts to beat out of step. It's generating its own electrical signal. This single cell with its different beat throws John's heart into chaos. Its signal clashes with the pacemakers. Electrical anarchy breaks out. Without a unifying pulse, his heart is unable to beat. It is in VF, ventricular fibrillation. His brain's oxygen supply drops to nothing. Unless John's heart is made to beat again in the next four minutes, his brain will be permanently damaged. The shock is 130,000 watts, enough power to light a football stadium. It's not designed to start John's heart. Instead, it stops it dead to give the pacemaker a chance to take back control. Shit, it's still VF. Charging 200. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you everybody. Let's get him up to see you quickly. It's, it's alright, right, John. You've, You've done, done really well. Your heart went into a funny rhythm, John, but you're going to be okay. Okay? Over the next five days, the ruptured membrane of John's plaque will heal. During that time, he'll be given drugs to stop a new clot from forming but the plaque will always remain in his artery. There's damp coming through that wall, though. Relax, will ya? You're beginning to sound like Kenny. Forget about work. And you better forget about the football, too. Here you go. Oh. Oh. On the line. Oh. 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 John has had a lucky escape. For the rest of his life, he'll take blood thinning drugs to prevent his arteries from blocking again. On his heart, the half million cells that died have left a scar. A permanent reminder of the trauma it has suffered. Get him in the neck, come on! No! This is incredible! This is disastrous! We'll just go Keep watching Discussion Topics and Activity and Resources for an Inside Look Heart Attack are up next on Assignment Discovery. Now that you've seen an inside look heart attack, talk about this. In the program, John's lifestyle contributed to his heart attack. Discuss ways in which people could be encouraged to make personal choices that promote a healthy heart. What factors in our lives lead us to make unhealthy choices? Now try this. For one week, record what you eat, the amount of cholesterol you consume, and how much you exercise. Research the optimum cholesterol intake and exercise level for your age group. How do you measure up to an average teen? 
Log on to discoveryschool.com slash teachers for curriculum materials and resources to support an inside look heart attack. To learn more, Assignment Discovery suggests Heart Disease by John Coopersmith Gold.